Hey everyone, this is Manly Bastard, and welcome to Vanilla Garden of Judgment, a visual novel adventure game from Sharon of Ganderella fame and of a recently played game, Cradle of Ruin. The description's a little vague, something about death in paradise and people will know your crime, something like that. So it's very mysterious, so I'm going in this pretty blind. And like all Sharon games, it describes multiple endings, with almost all of them being bad and one kind of true end. But this is their latest work, actually released late 2018, so I'm excited just because of the fact this is supposed to have the best production values and production out of all of them. So Cradle Room was early 2017. This is a late 2018, was released in Comic Cat. So like I said, this is supposed to have the most production value. This actually had full VA work, by the way. But it's been pulled from the English release. And I don't know exactly why, no one seems to know, and I'm assuming it's some kind of permission thing. Their next game, which is coming out in about a week, of this video posting anyway, will apparently have full voice acting in the English release, so we'll see if they maintain that or not. I saw a sky glittering in the colors of a rainbow. This was in a scenic white garden surrounded by a cropping of trees. I was there, alone with her. What a pretty color. She whispered that under her breath. She was calm, very much so. A wind blew past, and the girl's hair swayed with it. The sweet smell of flowers pricked my nose. The girl continued to look at the sky, paying not a glance to me. I raised my eyes upward once more. There was no sun above us, no moon, no stars. Yet the sky shone, glittering in many hues. It could have painted the earth, it was too brilliant for the naked eye. It was the first time I had seen such a color in my life. I suppose we won't ever see it again. During the time I'd forgotten to breathe, the girl spoke. So I just... So there's a little funny thing here. Creole Rune was released on Steam later, but it seems like this one has a pretty good translation, actually. Um, but this was released earlier than that, so I'm assuming Creole's of Rune was probably translated and released somewhere else, maybe on DL side earlier. And then they probably corrected their mistakes of that with this one. Yes, this would be the last. We wouldn't be looking up to the sky again. This was the very last time. This girl and I wouldn't be in hand in hand ever again. But you're fine with that, I see. The girl smiled gently. So a pretty vague opening. The theme of the game is apparently l challenging life and death. So, we'll see where it goes. Black. Black as far as the eye can see. I sprint in the midst of such endless darkness. Underneath my feet was a muddy path. I sprint in and sprint in the darkness of a forest, looking for yet to be found light. As if I was being chased by someone, as if I was running away from someone. I sprinted, not sparing a glance behind me. At one point I hit the ground hard and found myself covered head to toe in mud. Breathing hard, I looked pitiful. There I was, running my hardest, punting ripples into the ground, and yet... I couldn't remember the most basic things, such as who I was trying to run from or who was chasing me. No, nothing. I couldn't remember a thing. Why was I here? I felt stupid for running, and abruptly stopped in my tracks. My vision cleared as I did so, and I saw my surroundings vividly. I was utterly surrounded by the green of overgrown trees. Ben. My attention drawn to light seeming for the trees I traveled deeper within. At the clearing was a pure white, a field overflowing with white flowers spread before my eyes. I breathed a sigh of relief and closed my eyes. The sweet smell of flowers pricked my nose. To what was the name of this flower? Hello? Are you... Vanilla? I finally found you. Suddenly a voice spoke. 
I opened my eyes to see a girl colored entirely white. I mean, the title of the game is called Vanilla, and you're kind of white motif. Her skin was pale as well as her hair and dress. She, says she stood still in front of me. Those green eyes of hers clouded with an expression somewhere between joy and sadness. Welcome to this garden of white. Here, all are cleansed of their sins. I have been waiting for you for a long time. Uh-oh. I have choices, but how do I save my game? Uh-oh. Maybe this is not an important choice and the saves come up later, Bun Bun. No, it is the bunt. I just had to click the bun bun. Uso is a common safe point all over the country. Ben. Who are you? My name is... The girl lowered her eyes, a troubled expression flashing over her features, before facing me again. Vanilla. My name is Vanilla. Please call me by that name. Vanilla. That seemed to be her name. Come to think of it, the field of flowers blooming wildly before us may have been the same name. Who am I? And what was I made for? I'm afraid I can't tell you. You must find that out for yourself. Now come with me. I'll show you the way. Oh god, this is never a vague journey. Wait a second. I'm showing you to the place you will live at from now on. You should close your mouth and come with me. After all, you cannot recall even your own name, can you? She's right. As I was, I was an amnesic. I didn't even know who I was. It might have been a good start to just listen to what she told me to do. You sure a follower? This way. The girl said this and faced her back to me. Her white dress fluttering behind her as she began to walk. I followed her wordlessly. Past the flower garden in Green Meadows was a tiled pathway. My field of vision grew to see a building like a castle off in the distance. A gentle cold wind breezed past. The vegetation there wasn't nearly as vibrant as the ones before them. The surrounding structures were all falling apart. Old tiles and rubble were strewn about. It was as if this place was a long forgotten city of old. It just feels a little weird coming right after Cradle Rune to have such a smooth reading where I don't have to like kind of adjust it on the fly. Bun. Now I'm not sure this is gonna like code choices of color or if that was just a gimmick tied to Cradle of Rune. I I'm suspecting that was a story gimmick to that. So we're probably going in this blind. What is that building or is there anyone living inside? Let's go with what is that building. Vanilla did not answer my questions. She continued to walk toward the castle of determination. I elected to save my breath and follow her silently. I'm gonna come up with a crack fury before any story is known whatsoever, just to see if I throw a dart at a board and land it. Crack fury number one. We are a reflection of vanilla, or vanilla is a reflection of us. Or we're the same person. Some some mirror weird thing like that. Like I said, I'm not basing this off anything. It's literally just throwing a dart at the board and I'm seeing if I get at it by the end. We made it to the building. Vanilla stopped and turned to me. By the way, is my name some kind of combination of row? Vantaro? There's a bell by the door. Be sure to ring that. You should have one of the early occupants of this castle come outside to see you. I nodded as I was told. Climbing a staircase to press a button and laid by the door. A moment passed before I heard the hushed voices of women. They seemed to be whispering something, but I couldn't hear well through the door. Finally the door opened to reveal a girl's face.
Here's the other thing that Sphinx claims to have. Aside from when it originally had voice acting, uh, it, it claims to also have up the amount of CGs that Sharon usually has. From like 50 to 150, if I didn't read the number correctly. Girl with almond eyes. Ah, it was a man. How unusual. She had long hair and almond eyes. She was relatively attractive, with a decent figure. She was clothed luxuriously in a brightly colored antique dress of fine material. She lazily fixed her eyes on me. Everyone looks kind of like they're dolls. I don't mean their faces are dead, but in the sense, like, fashion-wise. Ah, uh, he looks scared. He must have wandered into the forest too, right? Jeez, alright. Just get inside. Let's start by talking some over some tea. How's that sound? Despite her acting fatigued by my presence, she showed me inside the castle. I found myself lost for a second, taken aback that someone would be so kind to a person that they just met. But it was just as she said. I had no idea who I was, nor where I was going to go. I couldn't be thrown onto the forest in my current childlike state, so I followed her, this time without hesitation. That's right. Before anything, I need to say thank you to the girl from earlier. Thank you for showing me the way, is what I thought to tell her, but... The girl in white had suddenly disappeared. It's a good thing I took at least two years of Spanish. Even if I actually can't speak it. I wonder if that was an intentional thing, or if it was just a bug, like there's multiple movie files in there, and it picked the one that was in English. My footsteps echoed in the corridor. I followed the almond eyed girl through a carpeted hallway. Our shoes tapped against the carpet in the midst of an awkward silence. It seemed as if the sounds didn't bother the girl, however. As I walked, I swept my eyes over my surroundings. The inside of the castle was more spacious than I had imagined it to be, and was lavishly furnished with expensive furniture. It also seemed as if the place had had every nook and cranny cleaned, to the point not a speck of dust could be found. The building itself was impressively built, and it was possible to see its comp- Competent construction from the outside. Hi, how you doing? We're not in limbo, are we? 
And we're also not in a dream, right? Actually, we can be both of those things. We'll see. Ah, come to think of it. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Lilith. Anyway, you don't need to worry about being formal. So, do you remember your name? Interesting name. Hmm. Vanilla? Lilith. Truth is, I don't. Well, let's make a spun bun save. That is past the opening. Truth is, I don't. I thought so. Everybody who comes here hasn't got a single memory. I was the same. Well, it might be scary, but you've got nothing to worry about. All the girls here are nice people. Till they all start murdering each other or something bad happens. Then they're not so nice. But they still have a smile while they do it. Nice people. Essentially the girl here wasn't the only person living here. Judging by the size of this castle, hundreds of people could find accommodations here. If that was the case, then just how many people lived here? I thought to ask the girl, but stopped myself. As an amnesiac, I judged the bear not to butt in and ask about every little detail. I had no choice but to pick apart what information the girl spilled. I quietly followed Lilith. There. We're here. Saying that, Lilith stopped walking. What was that sound effect? The living room I had been taken to had two other girls inside. Sitting on the sofa next to an elegant table, they seemed to be relaxing. When the pair noticed our presence, they walked over with a curious look on their faces. Cheerful girl. I'm assuming you're the one in the middle. It looks kind of like a Love Live character. Oh my, a guest. This is a new guy. He hasn't got a name yet, apparently. Timid looking girl. The one on the right that has some kind of weird... Mirrored, symbolic fashion. I'm assuming that's going to come up story-wise. Well, good afternoon to you. It's nice to make your acquaintance. Yikes, he's all muddy. You okay? You get injured or something? It was just a little slip. Okay, that's good. Um, what should I call you? I believe we should think of a name for our guest first. It may take a while for him to remember that part of himself. Yeah, true. Okay, take whatever name you get, alright? If it's not convenient being a plain old John Doe, don't you think? Could someone think of one for me? Right then, since your hair is white... Ah, see? Our hair is white! And Vanilla's hair is white. We're a little step closer to that dartboard. Right then, since your hair is white, your name should be Blanco. It's Spanish for white. What do you think? It's cute, right? Okay, so the Spanish is intentional. Interesting. Interesting. Usually when they pick a, another language other than English to kind of throw in there, it's usually like German or something, not Spanish. Um, isn't that a little cut and dry? It's no issue if he's alright with it, though. I mean, it's temporary, so it doesn't matter. We ain't got any other bright ideas ever. You can call me Blanco. Oh, you're really okay with Blanco? Hey, awesome, Blanco. Blanco Schmanko. Doesn't matter. Both of you. Aren't you forgetting to introduce yourselves? Oh yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> My name is Sima. Nice to meet you, Blanco. I'm in charge of cleaning up the place. Mm, I guess you could say my hobby is writing novels. <laughs> Doesn't work out too well, though. That's not even close to being the case. I once had an opportunity to read one of Sima's stories. It was lovely and unique. I enjoyed the experience. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, thanks, Soyo. <laughs> You're making me feel shy. Interesting names. My name is Soyo. In this castle, I handle cooking for the most part. If you like, tell me what kind of food you enjoy. 
I'll keep it in mind when I'm thinking of what we'll have. And, let's see. I'm skilled at brewing tea. I also make sweets from time to time. Soyo's the oldest of us here. But me and Lilith don't really treat her like she's older, since we don't want to make her feel left out. You should do the same, Blanco. There's no need to go out of your way regardless. Soyo. She was very composed and well-mannered. Perhaps as a result of that, her voice was hard to pick up. Was she a shy person? Yes. Ah, uh, shall I go ahead and introduce myself one more time? My name is Lilith. I'm on laundry duty, sort of. Uh, but I don't want to touch anything that's touched a guy, so can you do yours yourself? I mean, you'd be embarrassed if anything gross was on there, right? What are you implying? Hey now, hold your tongue for a second. I feel bad for Blanco. And Lilith, I've been the one doing the work while you're slacking off. I'm just kidding. Hmm. <laughs> you're just imagining it. Lilith, she was brash with her words and had a phony attitude. She acted like she was annoyed, but she went through the trouble of showing me my way here. So I figured her to be a good person underneath and all. Anyway, since we got introductions out of the way, how about someone show Blanco inside the castle? Blanco doesn't know anything since he just got here. You'll need a change of clothes as well. That is true. It would be inconvenient for him not to know where the shower room and toilet is. Wait, what? Why are the both of you looking at me? Hey, are you telling me I have to show him? Yes. It is tradition that we have to visit the toilets right away. Take me there. I will be disappointed, but I'll also be somewhat proud if we don't sniff the toilets. It's a very conflicting feeling. Yeah, I mean, you showed him this far, didn't you? Why not show him everything else? Yes, I agree. I'll leave it to you, Lilith. Hey, by just what logic do I gotta be the tour guide? I don't get a thing you two are saying. I don't want I'm a busy woman. I don't want to be looking after this guy. Sorry to be a bother. <sighs> hey, don't look at me that way. I can't say no to a face like that. <sighs> Alright, fine, I'll do it. I just have to show you around, right? Let's get this done already. Come along and make it fast. I knew you'd say yes, Lilith. Thanks. Be quiet, I'm not doing this for you, or him for that matter. You're just a stunner, eh? Thank you, Lilith. Maw. Jeez, you too, Soyo. You'll be remembering this later. We were seen off by the two women as we walked further inside the castle. Lovel was giving cheek as usual. Was she actually mad? What a pain. Well, it wasn't a stretch for her to be. After all, she had been half forced to look after me. The time of day was afternoon. But around this time, people would generally sample sweets while sipping tea. I felt a pang of guilt for having interrupted her precious tea time. What? I was just running my mouth. I'll give you a proper tour. While Lilith had a sharp tongue, I felt like I had a glimpse of her inner kindness to give me the tour one way or another. It was a little charming. Here's the shower room. Go and do something about all that mud. It's filthy. Lilith said this and roughly pulled the curtain aside. Thinking it wouldn't do to keep her waiting. I got into a shower of haste. The mud on my person was maddened and didn't come off too easily. I was in a forest before I came here. I've been running around that forest that was dark as darkness itself. I ran, fell, and gotten covered in filth. As if I had been running away from something. Why? I had no memories. I couldn't recall a thing. What had I feared? What had me in such a hurry? The mud on my body had already dried completely. Cleaning it was a difficult task even using a brush to scratch it. That's right. It was mud, mud for a fact. It was lukewarm, filthy, and dripping. I had tripped in the mud, and that's why I was covered in it. That was all there was to it. 
That should have been it. But why was I thinking something like this about the flip on my body? Did you murder somebody? It resembled... blood. It looked as if I had bathed in blood. Seeing myself like this, something awful came to mind. But only for a second. Oh. That looked kind of like vanilla. Had I killed someone? Was that why I was contaminated even underneath my fingernails? Maybe we killed someone in, like, the mud. Like, we forced them down and, like, choked them out or something. So, like, there was a struggle. That's why we're covered in mud. Killed. Who? I decided to stop such a foolish train of thought. I was surely, surely imagining things. How long had I been in the shower? Lilith called out to me impatiently. Hey, how long are you gonna keep standing there? Did you pass out or something? But then, then I'm on my way out. Whatever, get it done. Lilith breathed in an exasperated sigh by outside the shower curtain. When I stepped out from the shower, a towel and change of clothes were already prepared for me. I dried myself with the towel and put on the clothes before leaving the shower room. Lilo sat on the sofa, a bored expression on her face. It seemed I left her waiting for a long time. Now you know where the shower room is, right? The toilet is next door. We don't really have a scheduled time for showers. Why don't you shower when you like? Ah, but you're a man. Gotta be sure nobody's inside before going in. Got it? If you don't, I'm not taking responsibility for what happens. Those bluntness washed away the feeling of solitude that had come over me in the shower. That's how it should be. She should continue dispelling my worries, just by being her usual self. That's right. I should just keep thinking of anime hijinks, rather than the blood of my soul. I managed to remain calm, even with the strange thoughts whirling around my brain. This wasn't good. Keep it cool. If I lost it here, I'd l likely lose it all. I'd not only lose my reason to live, but also my value being here. I had to listen to Lilith's guidance that she was giving despite not, despite not wanting to. This is the cafeteria. The kitchen's next door. Most of us don't go in the kitchen besides Soyo. I'm clumsy, so I just cause problems. So, I'm in charge of eating. The cafeteria. It wasn't as large as expected, but it was built with the warmth of a cafe. Drinking tea would surely calm the soul. This is the library. Team has been writing something here, but I don't know what its details. The library. There wasn't many books available, but it was just the right place to write something. Come to think of it, Seema said she wrote as a hobby. What kind of stories did she write here? When I had the opportunity, I wanted to ask. And this is the garden. You should have passed it coming here. So you probably have already seen it, though. Seema takes care of the flowers here sometimes, apparently. I'm not really a fan of flowers, so I don't really care. The garden. There was a number of dying plants in the flower bed. According to Lilith, Seema was caring for some of them. But even the flower plants had yet to bloom. Was the ground sterile? However, according to that logic, the garden where I met the girl in white wouldn't have existed in the first place. Was that place special, or was there something else at play? There's a terrace above these stairs. The view up there is gorgeous, but I think it I think everyone thinks it's a pain to go all the way, so nobody really goes. If you want to exercise, why not go and see? There's a lot of stairs, you'll tire yourself out though. The terrace. Most likely it was at the highest point in the castle. One could likely get a bird's eye view of this entire area. Despite the long climb I find it might be worth trying to go up. And lastly, this is your room. It's your freedom to keep it clean or leave it messy. Just do whatever you want with it. The room that was prepared for me was more than I deserved. The room was large and pristine. Had someone been keeping it clean before I arrived? And by the way, I'm rooming next door. Try to think weird at night and you'll be getting a back of this hand. God, I didn't even do anything or say anything yet. I didn't even like, sniff the toilets or anything. I'm an innocent character. I see. I realized the girl to be my surveillance.
I also realize, well, we're not a traditional row character, at least yet. I'm assuming when the Japanese would look at the word, like, blanco, since there is an O sound at the end, I think that is technically the, the row sound. For now, anyway. I can understand not being able to predict what a complete stranger in mail could do after intruding on your living space. I felt ashamed to have it be watched, but it wasn't unreasonable. I had to make sure I made no mistakes around the other residents. I pretty much explained everything by now, I think. You're good. You can do whatever you want until it's dinner time. Thanks, Lilith. It, it's not like I did it for you. I just did it because everyone asked me to. You baka. Was she Sundere or what? I retorted in my thoughts. If I told her this directly, I might have gotten punched. Just making even more of a cliché at that point. Anyway, she was a bit too malicious to be a Sundere, I thought. I think Lilith for the broad introduction and left. I wanted to rest. Thinking that, I searched for a place to sit and relax and came upon the cafeteria. There, Soyo sat sipping on tea. This could be a situation where... So, th when the little flash happened of the, um, I'm assuming, a dead girl, it looked like it could have been Vanilla, but it also looked like it could have been uh, Lilith, actually. So, maybe there's a thing, maybe we're a serial killer, who knows. And these are just all girls we've killed. And we're, we're atoning by spending some time with them. And at the end, we're gonna realize we're a terrible person. <laughs> ah, Blanco. You came just at the right time. I just finished brewing the tea. Would you like to join me? Um, if it's not a problem. Thank you. Er, I'll have some? Yes, go ahead. For today's sweets, I tried baking cookies. I hope it's to your taste. Ben. When the cup I was given approached my mouth, the sweet smell of peaches reached my nose. Sitting like this and sipping tea caused a feeling of nostalgia to rise to the surface. I could have drunk tea like this with someone in the past. Someone. I couldn't think of anyone. Yeah. At that point in time, the tea had smelled even sweeter. This is peach tea. Seema absolutely loves it. Lilith, however, hates tea and will only eat the sweets. You monster. That's funny. <laughs> and it's thanks to those two that I can enjoy my days here. Is it alright for me to be this happy? This comes to mind quite often. Soyo smiled a lonely smile and began her story. Asima and Lilith had already been here by the time I came. As a result, even if I'm the oldest, I'm the newest to the castle. Those two were kind to me when I didn't know anything. I'm truly grateful. As I saw, the only three people in this castle were Asima, Lilith, and Soyo. If Soyo came later, then Asima and Lilith must have been living here earlier. Anyway, just what was this place? Who built this castle? Could those two have done it? Built such an impressive structure all by themselves? God, no. No, no way. That was impossible. The girls must have moved into a castle someone had built previously. It must have been for that reason the area looked like a long-forgotten city. So, please rest at ease, Blanco. You must be confused because of your amnesia, but you will be fine. You should be able to remember gradually in these beautiful surroundings. Come to think of it, Blanco, have you yet to remember anything? The Soyo stirred her tea and asked cheerfully. To tell you the truth, when I came here, there was one thing I could remember. That one thing was my name. My true name is... Kazumi. Interesting. So maybe we are a row. Someone that could gently encompass others like a breeze. That was what was wanted for me when I was named, it seems. That was all I could remember. Her true name. I heard those words and was suddenly taken to reality. Did I have a name? A name that I had once been called by, by someone out there. Isn't that lovely that there are names given with a wish? It said that humans grow up to be the person that their name implies. How mysterious. 
I would like to hear your true name someday as well. That is, if you can remember, however. Not confident that'll happen. That is okay. Everyone's starting like you. Also, you will remember one way or another. My past, I see it in dreams. Every day since coming here, you will remember who you are. Gradually, as you live here. That is why I can say you will gain everything back for sure. Dreams. I wonder, just where we are, and what kind of place it is. I can't say for certain what is happening. Before I realized it, I was lost in a very dark forest, and I eventually came upon this place. But well, you're not the same, Blanco. I see. I was the same as the rest of the girls. Plague by amnesia. We all were lost in the forest before making it here. The only reason the girls were all, were all calm was because they had remembered everything there was to remember. That's why they could remain sane. They weren't flustered as who I was. That is if it is truly possible for one's memories to return them in their dreams. My, it's this time already. I talked for far too long. My apologies. I will go make the preparations for dinner. Thanks. No, I'm sorry to cut our conversation short. If you'd like someone to talk to, I believe Simo is still looking after the flowers. Lilith comes and goes as she pleases, like Mundo, so I'm not sure of her whereabouts. Soyo said she will prepare dinner. I wasn't particularly good with my hands. That fact was sunk into my body, so I knew if I were to help her, I would only cause trouble. Thinking I should get in her way, I left. So this is definitely the, the character introductionary part of the game. So I'm not sure if these choices are mattering so far, if there's maybe affection points. But the answers look pretty similar, so maybe not. Who knows? Oh, Blanco. What's the matter? When I came to the garden, Sima was looking after the flowers like Soyo had said. Sima saw me and smiled and had me happily. <laughs> Did you come to help me? It's too bad, but I don't really got any work for boys. Sorry. What you doing? No. Flowers are important in symbolism. What's that flower? Oh, this flower is a gardenia. I was just watering it. It's still budding, though. If you don't want it often, it'll dry up straight away. Did you know? They say gardenias grow in heaven. It's the flower that brings joy and blessings. Isn't that great? Is that foreshadowing something? Hmm? All the flowers in this garden need a lot of care to keep on living. That's why I'm spending a lot of time taking care of them. For some reason, they're all wilting, though. Is it the earth here? As I thought, the vegetation here wilted easily. The earth could very well be sterile. What? Why are you still planting flowers then? <laughs> I wonder why. Truth is, I don't really know either. I didn't have any hobbies until I came here. You know how we don't have anything to do here. That's why I thought I'd do this. Yeah, not for any special reason. Isn't it weird? That's wonderful. <laughs> Thanks. Lilith makes fun of me for it all the time, though. Nah, no one likes Lilith. She's all, why are you looking after those buds, lad? Well, will to no time. I thought the same thing. Why would someone plant and try bloom flowers on sterile ground? Normally, nobody would do this. Then why was she trying her hardest to take care of these flowers? Despite this, I didn't ask her anything. I wasn't going to ask about the person's intentions in this case, because it wasn't possible to put those feelings in words. Soyo always works hard cooking our meals, and she makes us tea and snacks for free. That's why she's probably busy. She doesn't have time to look at the flowers. But you know, sometimes, she reads my stories while she drinks her tea. That gets me so happy. Oh, right. Writing stories is my specialty. Uh, actually, I, I guess it's not my specialty. It's kind of a, a hobby, I guess. You interested, Blanco? I have some in the library, so you can give them a read sometime. Artists never tell a story of words. 
Rather, everything they want to say is between the lines. I believe Seaman to be the one of these people. I knew nothing at the time, but one day I just might learn what was going on in Seema's mind. Do you have any strange hobbies, Blanco? This is just a guess, but you seem like you'd like books since you're quiet. Are you the literary type? Oh, sorry, you don't remember anything, right? It'd be nice if you could gradually get your memories back. Yeah, if there's anything I can do, let me know, okay? Thanks. <laughs> You'll be fine. Don't sweat things. Seema's kind smell was a breath of fresh air. I think he was wanting to keep her for too long, I left. Lilith? Looking kinda catty at me. So, why are you here? What is it? I mean that much, is it? Is that it? You stalker or something. J J Jiminy crickets, Lilith, calm down! I'm just walking inside! There's only one path? Is this wish fulfillment? The reason was I had some time until dinner was ready. I ended up coming to the library by chance. When I did, Lilith was there. That was all it was. I didn't follow her. Or did we? Lilith, who was spread on the sofa, didn't seem to fit the library's atmosphere. Lilith suddenly burst into laughter, seeing my tired expression. <laughs> Come on, lay up on that dumb expression. Seriously, what's with that face? Just thinking about it makes me laugh. Ha ha ha! When you got here this morning, I saw you all teary in the door, too. Don't fool me, me, Lilith Toro. Bun. That's mean. Sorry, sorry, I'll stop laughing. Don't be mad. <laughs> you. Okay, I'm calm. Lilith likely wasn't being malicious, though there certainly would be people bothered by her condescending attitude. I still owed her for showing me around the castle, so I didn't say anything. At least out loud, anyway. I ignored Lilith, who had rolled over laughing, and sat on the sofa across from her. If you talk to Seema and Soyo, you kinda look like you came here because you don't have anything to do. A little. What, you're jealous? Okay, I don't really care, though. Yeah, sure. Do you want to ask me something? If it's something I know, I might just give you an answer. It's just heaven. Wait, let's just cut- let's cut right to the- right to the beat of this. Who knows? I don't know either. I don't think this is heaven, though. Really? Why are we here? None of you are trying to get the heart of the matter. And also, I think we're being kept here without knowing anything. I'm gonna say it straight and tell you I'm tired of it all. Living here, you know. I mean, there's nothing here. Nothing fun, nothing that makes me happy. There's nothing. There's only, only sadness here. That's what my dreams tell me every night. I did something bad, so that might be my punishment. Tell me about your dreams. I get nightmares. Can't describe it any other way. So I was able to be carefree about the whole remembering of memory things, but I only get the bad things in my dreams. It's like seeing all the wrongs I've committed in daily digest. Could get any worse. Yeah, this is definitely limbo. You ought to be careful too. You can't wake up even if it's tough because it's a dream. Hey, don't get the wrong idea. It's not like I was talking about to help you out or anything. We well, must be pretty uneasy, right? You were brought to this remote place then. <laughs> I was gonna say. You must be at sea. Anybody would. It's normal to feel that way. It wouldn't be strange you lost your marbles, right? Love spoke maliciously and put people down with ease. Yet somehow, I didn't hold her to the things that would normally have her hated. Somewhere there was warmth in the smell that sometimes played on her lips, and the care she showed me. Likely Lilith was kinder than she let on. Anyway, where did the name Lilith come from? If I remember correctly, the name was supposed to reference evil spirits to cause harm to both men and boys alike. Tell me about your name. 
It's an alias, isn't it obvious? Begin my name when I got here. We all call each other by nicknames here. Huh. My true name. What do I gotta tell you? That's private. You get to earn it on my route. Promise me you'll not interfere with our past and names. We won't either. I kinda like how Sharon's drawn the eyes now. There's like a little, like there's kind of a prettiness to it. Like I'm, I'm kind of drawn in. And the coloring is a little interesting, like it's a little bit of a... It's not quite water coloring, but it's a little bit of a, a lightness to it. So I feel very like comfy and relaxed right now. And it'd be really bad if that was spoiled somehow with some dark scene. I don't think it's gonna happen yet, but... Right now I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Like things are gonna like be okay. Well, it's not really a big deal the person in question wants to talk about, but my name is... Nah, never mind. I don't want to talk about it. When I brought the topic with names, Loaf began to brood. She might not have wanted it known. I thought to avoid bringing up the topic again. I decided to change the subject and ask about the girl in white. Would Lilith know anything about the girl who brought me here and disappeared from thin air? Have you seen a girl in white? A girl? I didn't see anyone. The only person I saw this morning was you. Oh my, you see a ghost or something? You could have gotten cursed before you lost your memories. <laughs> Poor you. <laughs> she really was there, though. I was joking. Anyway, she brought you here, right? She's not a violent ghost, so no need to worry, right? Nobody knew where we were. We were also apparently shown dreams of our past each night. According to Lilith, these were nightmares. The girl in white called herself Vanilla. The girls here didn't seem to know of her. I could very possibly have been the only one to have seen and spoke of her. Just what was she? Things grew more and more mysterious. Well, they already have their memories back. If we did something to them, they would recognize us, wouldn't they? But who knows? Afterwards, the residents of the castle all had dinner and returned to their individual rooms. I finished what I needed to do before bed and lay down. I wanted to sleep already. I was exhausted in mind and body at this point. However, I couldn't calm myself. Was it because I hadn't gathered my thoughts? Or was it anxiety for going to a new place? Or was it my frustration with myself for not being able to remember anything? Thinking exploring the castle would be a good change of scenery, I left my room silently so as not to wake anyone up. I remembered Lilith said that the view from the terrace was quite nice. I climbed stairs, head to the guys in the castle. On a terrace with a calming breeze, she was there. Vanilla. I see. You've come. The girl in white turned and put on a suspicious smile when she saw me. She then cued the speakers so she was testing me. Is the scenery here not breathtaking? How did you feel taking in this landscape? What did you believe this place to be? I could see a sea of clouds from the terrace. As if the sky glittering in the seven colors was... suddenly the end of the world as we knew it. What was this place? A terrace, where one had the whole area underneath their fingertips to provide no answers. I get to grasp even the basics. Here the sky glitters in a palette of colors, shrouded in never-ending clouds. It's as if we were in a castle built to pierce the sky. We might be in heaven. Yes, yes. This world exceeds human understanding. The gold cue to speak of she were an emotionless doll. The more I stared into the girl's green eyes, the less I felt I understood her. Just why did this girl save me? Thank you. There is no need to thank me. I did nothing but fulfill that what was required of me. Was she being shy or did she simply have no interest? I couldn't read the motions off the girl who had turned her eyes away from me. Did you speak with the others? The others was like the three girls. Did Vanilla know the girls somehow? You will need to be frank with the others as long as you live here. Thanks again? Yes, the girls seem to have come to feel comfortable in the months since coming here. 
Their expressions have become peaceful. Judging from Vanilla's speech, he knew who the others three were. Yet Lilith said she didn't know of her. The mysteries, the mysteries grew left, right and left. There were too many things I couldn't understand. Ah, yes. Let me warn you of one thing. I recommend you not to pry into the past of the residents here. Do not meddle in others' affairs. Do the others not wish the same thing? Oh, I'm gonna muddle, all right. I'll write myself right to a bad end. So it says there is three bad ends and one true end. And there's three girls in the castle. So maybe that's how it's gonna roll out. I also recommend not following those who attempt to leave. Caring for others excessively will only cause your destruction. I knew nothing about this girl, yet I felt her words to be the truth. It was important not to pry too much. And stepping too far into someone's private matters wasn't a good idea for either party. It was likely a good idea to listen to what this girl had told me. Also, please remember this one thing. Regardless of what is to happen here, you are free of sin. Hmm? This is an extreme case, however. If someone were to die or disappear, or were to be murdered, you are free to do as you please. Those troubling words suddenly spilled from her lips, and my heart just filled them on my stomach. I could do as I pleased. I could kill as I pleased. Just what was this girl saying? What a disturbing thing to say in such a peaceful place. I felt as if her words had jinxed me. She spoke as if predicting something unpleasant were to happen in the future. I just want to live in peace. Yes, that may be true. You have food, shelter, and an environment prepared for you. You live without any restrictions. You live with order. Was my imagination playing tricks on me? There was no possibility of anything happening. I could only think of living peacefully with such nice people. Stop it. It must have been my imagination. Though, are you not mistaken? There is not only fun to be had here. Do you not see nightmares each night? Dreams of your past? I, mean, I just arrived here. Dreams. Was Vanilla talking about the same dreams that Lilith and Soyo had mentioned? As more and more time passes, you will come to recall the many sins you have committed. What was she doing? She spoke only of impossible things that attempted to bewilder me. Or was she trying to tease me? She knew too much. Too much of the workings of this world. Tell me more about yourself. Do you have an interest in me? Yet I told you before there was no need. You are truly hard to convince. You may think of me as a servant. I apologize, but... I'm not at liberty to speak any more on the matter. You should rest now. Everyone else will have retired to their beds by now. Vanilla disappeared as soon as she said this. The girl in white, Vanilla. Just what was she? I was spending my first night here since coming to this place. Too much had happened, and I hadn't properly processed all the information. I once heard that humans processed the goings-on of their day while asleep, or I thought I had. I was exhausted. I went to bed as soon as I could. Good night. Will you assume me? Button! I saw a painting. A dark painting. A dark painting without a single beam of light. That painting had fallen before me. I had been drawing. Perhaps drawing was my hobby. I had been told to do so. I drew my own volition. But this had not been painted by me. It had been someone else. Someone that wasn't me had, had painted this. I knew that person. I had the feeling I knew this person very well. Who was it? Who was calling me? Why did you invite someone like me? I'm negative. I don't smile and I'm no fun to be around. I wonder why. It was probably because I found it fun to talk to her. It was only with her I could have so much fun talking about her interests. What was this memory? Everything was messy. Why did I know this person? Fun. You think it's fun to be around me? I got it. 
I can still be fun to be around then. The girl whispered this and tucked in her chin. I remember that, that happy face of hers didn't have leave my head for days. I thought it was a surprise for her to make such an expression. Who was she? Why did she know me? No, I knew her. That girl was very important to me. She was someone I shouldn't forget. Her name was... Huh. Why couldn't I remember? She had been so important to me, yet I had forgotten not just her name, but her voice, her face, and everything else. It all grew foggy and distorted. Oh, I see. This was a nightmare they mentioned. I was being shown a nightmare of the past I didn't want to see. I was being shown a fragment of an unchangeable past. A time that I couldn't recover even if I regretted it. A time I couldn't possibly return to and redo. But my eyes opened. White curtains fluttered. I still lived peacefully with the three other girls. Just what was this place? I might have been in... Heaven or hell. Let's rock. Sorry, I didn't mean that reference. Hell sounds like a cooler answer. I'm thinking heaven, but... Or hell.